So I'm out in the shop with my genuine Cummins pump, which was made in Cien, China. And it's a giant piece of crap. Somebody asked me how you check the end play on a pump. So this gear is pressed on there and uh, it's got a, a half moon key in it. So basically what you need is a magnetic base and this monkey contraption here so you can get it on there, set it on the flange of the gear, then get you a bar, put it under there. Is that zeroed? About on one, it looks like. What do you see there? I see way too much backlash. That's too much. That's just not going to work. So I want to show you something else. So I'll show you inside this porthole later. I'll probably have to get out my camera to do, or my uh, phone camera. So as you rotate this pump around, right there are some gears or teeth. It's, it's like it's binding up. And we're free and we're free. Ooh, right there, it's getting hard again. So watch the gauge, watch it move. Something's crooked. Is it the gear? Is it the shaft? What's going on here? So that's how you would check the backlash. Now, let's set it up to, or excuse me, that's how you're gonna check the end play. And basically what that is is the distance between the end plate and the bottom of the housing here. That's, it has 7 thousandths of clearance between the gears. And what's gonna happen there is, as it pumps, the oil is gonna spill up through that. Let, it's gonna, the 7 thousandths is all gonna be on the back side. Why? Because that's a helical cut gear. And helical gears, it's pulling that gear in towards the engine. So the pump gear is up against the bottom of the housing all the time. When you take these apart, there'll be nowhere whatsoever on the back, back plate if it has a helical drive gear. So it's constantly pulling it up there. So when it's pumping, I don't know if it gets even in there or not. So let's say it gets even. If it's even, it has three and a half thousandths on both ends of the gears and that three and a half thousandths oil spills over the top under those gears goes back around in the suction gets recirculated. Now I'm not taking this apart because I don't want them when I send it back I don't want them to say hey you took it apart we keep you know we're not crediting your money back. But if I could take it apart I would take a feeler gauge and put between the gears and the outside of the housing and that's another critical measurement because you're going to get a lot of spill there too. As the tooth comes around in the housing, if there's a lot of clearance, there's oil that just goes past it. That's just the way it is. So that's a critical clearance there also. Um, also the shape of the teeth and how they're made, they need to be all the same and they, this pump should rotate evenly. Shouldn't bind and it's binding. Um, and I will show you inside there how the teeth are cut. They're pretty bad. Uh, so let's, let's set it up to check the backlash. I'm going to reach in there and I'm going to hold the idler gear and then we're going to turn this top gear and we're going to see how much backlash we have. Okay, this is out of the manual. This is your lubricating oil pump drive shaft end clearance. It's uh, two thousandths minimum, five thousandths maximum. At five thousandths 
they're no longer capable of pumping what they were designed to pump. Not a lot of leeway there, is there? So those clearances are pretty critical. So let's go down and let's find the backlash. So I'm gonna stick a pen in here and uh, jam it in the gear there so it can't move. And then we're gonna turn this one and we're not moving the idler gear this is strictly the driven so we're about what are we 20 yeah it keeps moving there i having a hard time putting enough pressure on this to hold it still but let me push harder okay there's our backlash what do you see Looks like about 10, 20, 21, 22. So that's acceptable. It's in the middle of that range. You get 35, your toast. So let's go inside through the hole here and let me see if I can show you the teeth in there. Okay, you see the teeth there? Do you see how they are not machined all the way down through so let me find you some more cherry looking ones okay see that now we've got pits in the root that's not good so there's another one pretty good sized pit and then a lot of the gear teeth have that line down them where they didn't clean up. When they machined them, they weren't able to clean them up. So, you get to certain places, it, like right there, it turns hard. And then it's free. And then it turns hard again. And you can feel it. Right there, it stops. Literally stops. You can feel it. It's like it's going over a hump. Hump, hump, stops. It doesn't turn free. Okay, so I tried to look down the outlet and I can sort of see the, the gear, the driven pump gear, uh, but I can't see the whole thing. But just judging by the idler gear, I'm sure the driven gear isn't much better. But the thing that's got me is when you come right here, it just kind of stops. It's like it's binding between a couple of gears. And uh, that's not good. It's got too much end, end clearance on the shaft. And uh, it's got gears that look awful. That is not worth a thousand dollars. I don't care if you put the word Cummins on it or not. It's just not worth it. So I'm sending this giant turd back. Uh, found one on eBay. Genuine Cummins, manufactured in 2009. And Brian said there was a bulletin uh, came out that every pump you bought from them was guaranteed because they ran it on a test bench. And they came, you know, they were oily inside because they'd run them. And 2009 would fall within the date range of that bulletin. And the Chinese just, they just figure, well, if it doesn't work or whatever, we'll just give you another one. Well, that's, it's nonsense. I mean, can't you build a damn quality product? They just, I'm really super disappointed in this. I paid a thousand bucks for a piece of shit. And uh, I don't want to take it apart because then they probably wouldn't take it back. So, you know, I, I could buy a piece of shit from China all day long everywhere for $300. I, I tell you, this parts thing's just turning into a nightmare. Junk, 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 junk. Everywhere you go, junk. So, since I don't have an oil pump and nothing I can do on the engine right now, 
I thought, well, I'd start cleaning up the pan, get it primed. I got a good coat of primer on it, and I'm going to turn it black. Uh, and then I got to clean up all the bolts, and I got some bracing that goes around the front and rear, some strips. I'll have to clean those up and get them painted. Um, anyway, I just want it to look good. You know me. I know I'm not painting it yellow. <laughs> So everybody keeps asking me if I'm going to paint this yellow. No, but I am going to put this on it. <laughs> that will fit on there. Fuel filter. So that is the one cat component that's going to get on it. Okay, give it a nice coat of black. She's going to be shiny. Probably not going to stay that way for long, but I got to tell you, I put primer on there, which Cummins doesn't even do. So it should last longer than the Cummins paint job. You think the Cummins paint job was made in China too? <laughs> Look at all the quackas today. Geese ahoy. I bet when they're done out there, there ain't going to be no uh, winter wheat to even come up. Because I'm, I'm kind of betting that's what they're doing is... Pulling up the seeds if they can get them. Bye. 
Okay. Looks much better, doesn't it? Sweet. Had my gloves on, but didn't have my mask on. How do you know? You can't see me. Never mind. I didn't say that. Okay, yeah, I've certainly had my share of problems with parts with this old girl. Don't know if it's a sign or not, but uh, we'll just work our way through it. Uh, get things going, get it fixed somehow. Um, I'm not going to let it beat me, beat me down. It kind of gets frustrating, but what are you going to do? You just got to work your way through it deal with the problem so I got the pipes all cleaned up and shined so I've been trying to kind of clean the firewall up but that's some tough stuff on there that hasn't been cleaned in a long time so I got plenty to do on here plenty to do so next time I see you hopefully I got some more parts and uh, but bearings should be showing up the second pump should be here and the rest of my gaskets, maybe we can get that bottom end to going and and uh, get the engine buttoned up and the STC redone. So we'll see you next time.